The short answer is no, unless you need these very specific features. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Kindle Paperwhite Signature Edition and whether or not it's worth the increased cost over the standard new Kindle Paperwhite. Towards the end of 2021, Amazon released a, few, a couple of different new types of Kindle, one of them being the Kindle Paperwhite and the Kindle Paperwhite Signature Edition, which is what I have here. Now, the signature edition comes in at around £40 more than the standard paperweight here in the UK, and a lot of people have been wondering whether or not it's worth the price. Well, I've had my signature edition for a few months now, I've put it through its paces, used it in a, a few different scenarios, and I can tell you my thoughts. So for anyone who's not sure, I'll just quickly go over the changes of the paperweight the new version versus the one that came out a few years ago. So just quickly running through them then, the bezels are smaller around the edges. You get more LEDs on the screen, there are 17 now. There's a warm light included, whereas previously this was only included in the Oasis and the Paperwhite only had a cold blue light. The battery life is better. Amazon claims about 10 weeks worth of battery life. The processor is faster, so you can switch between pages quicker and when you're flicking through your library, that's all supposed to be quicker. It's now waterproof. And finally, there is a USB C port, which a lot of people have been crying out for. That's a big change and one that's been positively received. Now those are the differences between the old Paperwhite that came out a few years ago and the new Paperwhite that's just released. But there's a more expensive version, which is the Kindle Paperwhite Signature Edition. And there are a few upgrades there as well. There are three main differences. The first one is the storage size. So this Kindle Signature Edition comes with 32 gigabytes instead of eight. It has an automatic light adjustment. So when you when you when the light changes around you, the light on the screen changes to match that. And finally, it has wireless charging capability, so you don't have to plug it in. If you've got a compatible wireless charger, you can just set it on there and it'll charge without being plugged in. So first of all, why did I buy a Kindle? Well, I was getting back into reading regularly and I wanted to read at night. And uh, I didn't want to read at night with a lamp on, with a physical book. Um, I wanted something else, I looked for something different. So I settled on a Kindle with the lighting that it has. It's soft, it's gentle, and with the, with the, with the paper whites now having the warm glow rather than the cold blue light, I thought it wouldn't disturb my sleep too much, so I decided to buy a Kindle Paperwhite. I also thought that you might get some cheaper deals on ebooks. Uh, you know, sometimes Amazon does put them on sale and they, they can be quite good good deals. So I was kind of hoping that over the years, this is kind of a long-term investment for me, and over the years, it might even pay itself back. Even if you just each book is reduced by a couple of pounds, then over time this will add up. And so I thought this would be a good investment for me. So why did I go for the signature edition? Well, I just traded in an old phone, so I had a voucher. The voucher covered the cost of the Kindle either way. And I was kind of curious, I kind of thought that maybe the auto adjusting backlight would be really useful for me because as I mentioned, I wanted to use it to sleep at night. So I decided I would go for this one just to try it out. I, I kind of thought that maybe if I didn't get the signature edition, I would regret it especially with the backlight. And, you know, there's always that doubt in the back of your mind when it comes to storage, will I use up the storage? So those are the reasons why I went for the signature edition. So how have I found using it? Well, I really, really like Kindles. I think they're a really good investment for anybody who likes to read. It's not heavy at all. It's really light. You can easily hold it with one hand. Uh, the battery is incredible. Amazon said 10 weeks. I haven't got 10 weeks, but I really have got a long time. I've had this for about three months now, and I think I've charged it twice, maybe three times. It's, it's, been, it's been very good. Not 10 weeks, but then it's still been really good. I've definitely been reading more with it and it had the unexpected bonus, which isn't really tied to the Kindle, but it's tied to the fact that I bought a book digitally. Even if I don't have the Kindle on me, if I'm out and about, but then there's a pause for a few minutes because it, I bought the book on Kindle, I can pull out my phone, read a few pages on there. So that's helping me to read more regularly and get more into the habit of that. Although I'm saying that it does fit into my pocket quite well, so I can take it some places with me, but you know, just just if I ever don't have it with me, and I do have a moment, then I can switch over to the phone, which is a benefit that I didn't realize I would have. Just a couple of negatives then. The first one is that the power button is in kind of an annoying place. You can see here it's on the bottom of the Kindle, and that's actually really quite annoying. Sometimes I'll read and I'll rest it on my lap while I'm reading, or I'll rest it like sort of here, and I'll accidentally press the button. Uh, it, it didn't happen then, funnily enough, but sometimes I'll press the button and it'll turn the Kindle off. It'll put it back to that cover screen. Um, that's happened more times than like I would have thought. I, I actually register it happening and that's kind of, just, it's just a small annoyance, but honestly, I don't see why they couldn't have put the power button on the top where, you know, you're never gonna accidentally press it if you're holding it like this. Nobody holds the Kindle upside down and, you know, does it like that, but, you know, just, just something maybe 
to be aware of. It's not a deal breaker, it's just a slight annoyance. On top of that, funnily enough, considering one of the reasons that I went for the signature edition was that auto adjusting light, I actually don't find it to be as useful as I thought I would. I still find myself sometimes having to go in and manually adjust the light setting. You know, if I'm going from reading in the day and then I put it down and then I take it upstairs and I read it at night, then it doesn't quite get the right brightness level that I want it to be. I haven't done that too much to be fair, so I'm not sure if it's still working out what brightness level I prefer things to be at. I don't know if it has that kind of capability, but considering it's one of the features that, you know, you're paying that extra money for, it's not quite worked out the way that I have wanted it to. So should you spend the extra money on the Signature Edition? Well, I'm gonna approach this from an angle that, you know, I think you've decided as much as you like physical books, you've decided you want a Kindle either way. So I'm going to set physical books aside and there the pros and cons of physical versus Kindle. I'll set those aside for now and just compare the Kindle Paperwhite to the Kindle Signature Edition version. I mentioned at the beginning, the answer for me really is no, it's not worth it, but there are a few use cases where, you, where it might be worth it. The first use case is, are you going to be storing audiobooks or comics on your Kindle and reading and listening to those on your Kindle? If you are, then it might be worth considering the upgrade because 32 gigabytes will give you plenty of space for comics and audiobooks. These take up a lot more room than just your standard digital ebook. If you just have the eight gigabyte version and you want to store plenty and plenty of comics and a lot of audiobooks on there, then you might start to fill that up. However, if you're just using it for ebooks, for normal books, then honestly, you don't need 32 gigabytes. Eight gigabytes is gonna do you plenty. It's, it's hundreds if not thousands of books to store all at once. I can't see anybody having a reason to need to store more than that number of books on a single device. The other reason is, do you really, really like wireless charging? You really hate plugging things in with a wire. You know, it really gets on your nerves. You prefer to just set it down onto something and let it charge and come back to it charge later. If you, if you really, really would like that wireless charging capability, then you can only get it in the signature edition. I do know some people that really like wireless charging and so for them maybe it would be worth it. For me personally I don't really think that it's better to get the signature edition versus the normal paperwhite. I think for most people the normal paperwhite will be the ideal Kindle to go for and we'll talk quickly about a few of the other Kindle models just to go through which one you might want which one might be best for you. So we talked about the Kindle paperwhite and the signature edition and there are two other models of Kindle that Amazon offer and that is a, a very basic Kindle and there's the Kindle Oasis as well. Now the Oasis is really, I, I don't think there's any point in buying the Oasis right now. We're kind of in that time period where Amazon have released a new Paperwhite, but they haven't yet released a new Oasis. And a lot of the features on the Oasis are on the new Paperwhite. So um, there's the, the faster speed, there's the warm light, the auto adjusting light. All of these things were originally features for the Oasis that didn't exist on the Paperwhite, but now the Paperwhite is caught up. Unless you really, really like that sort of form factor, the way you hold the Oasis, I'm not really sure there's any reason for you to buy that. I have personally tried the Oasis and I don't really like the way you hold it. I actually, it felt uncomfortable to me. You know, I could see myself using it for a while and it sort of like hurt my wrists. It's not really for me. So I personally, I don't think there's a reason for the Oasis to still kind of exist in the ecosystem of Kindles, but it's possible that Amazon has something up their sleeve and they're gonna upgrade that later down the line. Now, when it comes to the budget Kindle, this one is very, very basic. It's all, it's almost sort of like, you know, your very first Kindle that you might buy if you're not sure about it and you're just sort of getting into the idea of Kindles. You just have to bear in mind that while it's cheaper, you're getting less for your money. So, you know, the screen is slightly worse, the battery is slightly worse. It only has that cold blue light. It doesn't have the warm light, which a lot of people like if they're reading in bed. So it, it is much cheaper, but I think considering how long you'll probably keep a Kindle for and use it for if you're really into reading, I do think it's worth that upgrade to the standard Paperwhite version. For me, I think the one that I'd recommend to everybody is that Paperwhite version, but not the signature edition, just the standard brand new Kindle Paperwhite. But what about you guys? Do you use a Kindle? And if you do, which one do you use? Which one's your favorite? Let me know down in the comments which one you use and what you like about it over the other ones. Okay, there we go, folks. This has been my review of the Kindle Signature Edition Paperwhite. I hope you found it useful. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in books and reading, then you might like to check out this video here. Thanks again, and I hope to see you in the next one.